Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the special board meeting of the Action Agua Dulce Unified School District Board of Trustees on Thursday, March 7th, 2024. We are here to conduct the business of an appointment of a seat that is currently vacant. Um, let's start off by doing roll call. Chris is present. There we go. Brianna Texoni here. Mascot. Falls graph here. So do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? A motion. I will second. Owen, could you do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance for us this evening, please? Yeah, yeah, I Call the question. Uh, aye. Aye. Okay, Owen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will read the civility <clears throat> statement. When conducting the district's business, we will strive to communicate clearly and concisely with respect for the time of others. We will listen objectively, carefully considering the opinions of others. We will understand the counterproductive effects of disruptive, demeaning, and intimidating behaviors. We will understand and respect district policies and procedures, and we will maintain your respect for the rich history of the district and the efforts of others who have served in the past. We'll go to item C. Will someone move this in? I will second. This is the time where we are going to interview candidates for the vacant board seat. What will happen here is the board will take turns and we'll start with Mr. DeJesus on the end there who will ask question one. We will rotate through them until all the questions are answered. Um, it's my understanding that um, there were applications and everyone who filled out an application who chose to be here tonight is here at that time, is here at this time. That is correct. And we haven't had a notification that someone might be late. No. Okay. So what will happen is we have one candidate, we will interview that candidate if at some point during, between the end of that and, and, and a motion is made for an appointment to someone who had filled out a form on time were to enter into the room and ask to be interviewed, then we would honor that. And I hope everybody likes that. So that said, candidate number one, would you come forward and introduce yourself? And while you're getting yourself situated there, I will say that this is a thankless job. It's an unpaid job. It can be an unpopular job. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that 85% of what we do is mandated by the county. Uh, and I'd like to thank uh, my fellow board members for the service you give the district. And I'd like to thank anyone who filled out an application or even considered being here tonight because it is a big commitment and it is strong service to your community. So go ahead, sir, please introduce yourself. I'm William Mays. Thank you. Can we get started? Thank you, sir, for being here. I appreciate your, uh, your dedication and commitment. So I'll start off with a question one. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the basic purpose of public schools? And what is the role of the board of trustees in fulfillment of that purpose? Um, so basically, uh, as far as the basic thing for the schools is to educate our kids and make sure that they're getting the proper education and uh, that 
you know, we make sure that they can move on to get good careers in the future. And uh, for part two of that question, what is the role of the board of trustees in fulfillment of that purpose? Uh, so uh, helping provide leadership and making decisions that will help our district grow to a place that all of our families want to send their children to. Thank you. What are you proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? And what is your high, highest priority and why? So I'll repeat that if you want one question at a time since yes, it's please. a three-parter. What are you proud of in this district? Um, I believe that this school district has the advantage uh, that most don't by being a small town and our kids get more one-on-one -on -one attention than larger districts do. And what would you like to accomplish as a board member? Um, as a board member, I think the best thing for me to accomplish is first seeing how the board runs. And at that point, until I know how you guys run, I can give you a lot of advice and help, but not until I know how you run and what my place would be in your board to help make those decisions. And the last question to that is, which is your highest priority and why? Um, the highest priority would just be making sure that the, that we're here to help the kids get the education they need. And as a board, um, be here for whatever, obviously, Mr. Ken here, um, you know, you're in charge and what you need and what we need as far as helping the, the school itself the school district and the schools. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your Yeah. As a trustee, what do you see as your primary purpose or primary role? There's three questions in this, but I'll go with the first okay. one there. Part of it. Um, again, primary purpose would be to be here at the meetings, help make decisions for the school district and help it grow. And, uh, you know, just, <laughs> that's basically it. So. How would you fill that role, both as an individual and as a member of the governing board? Um, I would fulfill that role by, again, um, I've got a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of things I could do, but I can't until I know how you guys run. Boards are run a lot of different ways until you know how exactly this board is ran and how you guys do your business. Um, I can't really, I wanna make sure that I understand those things first before I can do it. Right, thank you for being here. Let, let's, let's follow uh, my fellow board members these by breaking up these questions. Mm -hmm. Describe uh, what a good board meeting looks like to you. Um, a good board meeting would be um, basically making sure that everybody is knowledgeable about what's going on with the school, with whatever agenda questions we have, making sure that there's not a lot of arguments going on, especially on the board floor. Um, we need to make sure that everybody is in conjunction with each other and that we show that we're a cohesive group of people. Um, that's the biggest thing I can see. Thank you. So the next part of that question is, what are the objectives of a good board meeting? What do you see as the, the pieces of a good board meeting? Um, to hit your agenda items and make sure that those are answered um, and to make sure that uh, everything stays in tune. Without the, you have to have your agenda, you need to answer your agenda items and then make sure that everything is going as per plan. Thank you. What would you do if you believe administrators had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? Uh, if we don't have complete and accurate information, we should be asking for more information to make sure that we're 
getting the information we need to make that decision. Describe your response if a parent cornered you in the grocery store and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Well, I don't think that we can support any hot issue. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the good of the, um, of the school district. And by being cornered, that's not okay. So at that point, you need to say, sorry, you know, we need to bring it to the board meeting. And, Go from there. <clears throat> How does an effective school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberation on important policy issues? Can you repeat that one more time? <laughs> How does an effective school board ensure opportunities? Uh, how does an effective school board ensure there are opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views and to inform board uh, deliberations on important policy issues? Uh, I believe that yeah, the only way uh, we need to make sure the parents know that they can come here to the board meeting, they can fill out a card, they can answer their quite you know they can ask their questions. Um, no questions should be answered or asked outside of this board meeting or, or board room. So the best thing to do is make sure that they know that this is the place to be, whether it's online and ask questions or whether it's in the room to ask questions. Um, yeah. Okay, this, this question is really important to me because I, I will make this statement. Um, the board president feels it seeks uh, consensus. Mm -hmm. So each one of these people up here has a 20% role, as you will the minute you sit up there if you're appointed. Right. Uh, and, and what, so no one is more important than the other. So let loose on this one. This is really important to me, whatever you think your answer is. Please summarize the strengths that you would bring to this board as a board member. Um, the strengths I'd bring to this board as a board member is I've been on multiple boards um, throughout the last 20 years, whether it's a little league board, whether it's a HOA board. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge of board meetings and how they ran. And uh, you know, I was a president of a little league for 18 years. So um, I think that I'm a good people person. Um, I would like to listen to everybody and get everybody's input. And, you know, it's not as the president or person in charge, you need the input of everybody that's in the room to make sure that you're getting done what you need to get done. Like you said, it's not just you, it's the whole board. So we need to make sure that everybody has the, the voices that they need to make sure that things are done right. Thank you very much. So what will you do to become a more effective board member or become or become more effective as a board member? Sorry. Um, again, to be, become the most effective board member would be to first start, listen to the way that you guys present things and represent things. Uh, at that point, once that I'm comfortable with the way that things are going, then I can give input whether it's one meeting, whether it's two meetings, you have to be able to be knowledgeable of what's going on before you can have a lot of input. I mean, obviously there's input, but I don't know how you guys run things. So until I know that, there's really not a lot of input that I can do with the first beginning, first meeting. Identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal value and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. Do you want me to repeat it? 
Uh, yes, please. Okay. <clears throat> Identify a recent board decision that you felt strongly about and describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal value and beliefs to determine how to vote on the issue. <clears throat> Well, that's a tough one because um, as I've seen some board meetings, I haven't seen a lot of them. Um, so as far as a recent board decision, I don't know that I can say one of it, to be honest. I mean, I, uh, that I could comment on, I guess. Does everybody mind if I move this on? Brian, could could you show an example of just anything? Yeah. Give an example, because this is more about how you see your right. process and okay. balance. So feel free. So I, I think I would have a hard time answering this too, because I can't off the top of my head without going back and looking. Just does so anybody have doesn't even need to be hypothetical? Just if you something you felt strongly about, right. how would you balance those things? What's more important? So how would you balance okay. that? So basically, um, as a board member, you know, I would, at the time of the discussions, be passionate about the discussion of what we're talking about. But once a decision is made, that decision is set in gold, and that's a decision that the whole board's made, and that's what we have to represent as a board member outside. Uh, we made this decision as a board, and this is what the decision is. And um, as far as, you know, Obviously, we need to make sure that decision does follow all federal laws and um, and that type of thing because we're governed by laws. Um, you know, that's basically what we have to do. Is biggest thing is make sure that everybody is in conjunction, and that's in my statement as well. What questions do you have? For the board to help you prepare to take on this commitment as chosen. Um, I mean, I think I don't have a lot of questions. Um, I have seen some of your board meetings. Um, I think it's a you all are a good group, and I think that I would fit in well with your group um, to hopefully solidify that last seat that's open. Uh, but I don't really have any questions at this point. <laughs> All righty. That's it. That's what that's. Um, let me check my agenda here. I'm still recovering from my drive. Okay, this is the time for um, public comments. There are no public comment cards pulled. Sure. Pretty sure, yes, thank you. Okay, uh, board members, do you have any comments? Yes, question. We, we can ask, we're allowed to ask a follow-up question. I mean, if somebody feels really pressed to do that, I won't deny them that opportunity. So, George, do you have any questions? There we go. Go ahead. I don't feel pressed to ask any questions. Lester, do you feel pressed to I ask do. questions? I do. Um, Mr. Mays, why do you want to do this? In your own words. Uh, why I want to do this is yeah. because I have children at Vasquez High School now. And I have grandchildren coming in um, in the near future. My, I just found out my one son that has kids uh, in elementary age is moving up here in the near future. So I'll have them. And then I have uh, two, a two year old and a seven month old grandbabies that will be coming to the school district. And I want to make sure it's the best district around for them. That's what I'm here for is to, I like. I like helping 
I like being involved. And um, yeah, I'm at Vasquez almost every day at softball or baseball games. And I work with Lester on the chain gang. And um, so I try to be around as much as I can. We good? I have nothing. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. do do would someone like to entertain a motion about the appointment of a candidate? I would like to motion to appoint William Mays to our school board. I'll second. Call the question. Yes, we say. Brianna Texoni, aye. Mask on, aye. Falls graph, aye. Welcome to the board, sir. I'm going to give you this now. This is the red folder. <laughs> What's the secret red folder? This is the residential clip This is your home. Okay. Everything you need to know is in there. All right. That's the security code for the box one. So, Mr. Mays will be sworn in at the next meeting. Is that correct? That is correct for March 14th. Um, if you have any questions, for me, the president, before the next meeting, mm -hmm. um, contact the superintendent. He'll arrange a virtual meeting for us to have a chit chat. Okay. And um, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, okay. Congratulations, Mr. Mays. And I, and I really appreciate that you said that you wanted to observe and just to get a sense of things. And I know when you walk into any new industry, first thing is to observe, get a lay of the land. And I appreciate you saying that because even me being here for only a short period of time, I'm still, I still have no clue on a lot of the terminology, a lot of the processes and stuff like that. So it is a big learning curve. I do appreciate you coming in with that mindset saying, hey, I'm going to observe just to, you know, just to understand the processes and things like that. So I appreciate that. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate you coming back and sticking with it. I know you interviewed before, um, and I appreciate that you um, had the, the yes, <laughs> stick to itiveness. <laughs> Thanks, Lester, to come back and, and try again. Um, because I know when you're interviewing three people like last time and all three people are great. It's hard to not say like we, I would love to vote for all of you. Um, so I'm glad that you came back. So thank you very much for coming back and putting your application in again and sitting in the hot seat again. I, I know it's not easy because I've done that too. So I just want to say thank you for um, coming back and trying again and congratulations. And we've sat on boards together, you know, your family pretty well. Um, I'm excited to work with you in this capacity. So congratulations and and thanks. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, we're all here to assist. If you need anything, obviously the red path will be going through. Mr. Falsgraf here. Um, one thing I found very helpful in the beginning was the California School Board Association. California School Board Association. That was a class. That you were able to take through there and it was like a three or four week like once one day out of like i think it was like four four sessions like what, every two weeks or something like that yeah didn't take a lot of time and i found it extremely helpful uh just to kind of give you a nudge out the door in the right direction and there was a peer group on there too that like a cohort that'll be on there of other board members that you'll build a network with you can and then, yeah it's all mine Tom, it was fantastic. Sure. Welcome for it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving along, there's a calendar uh, on here. There is uh, the oath of office will be given to you at our next board meeting, which is next Thursday. It starts at 6.30, so we'll bring you in um, and swear you in before uh, we go to closed session. Okay. okay. So if there's anybody that wants pictures or, or, or to watch that happen, have them here with you at 6.30. Um, I, I won't say that, I really won't. I think I'm the only board member that was not allowed into their first closed session meeting, but those, that was another time. On the regular board meeting of March 28th, 
it, it's very possible that I won't be here. Um, but we would have. Actually, it may be possible I won't be here either. Okay, yeah. so you and I will will war that out um, uh, and look at what the agenda is like. In the event that I'm not going to be here, I'm going to ask that um, Vice President Mascon um, handles the agenda review. And if it, it and if it's convenient to Mr. Mays that he observes your um, review of the agenda for that meeting, um, I'm going to want that to happen whether I'm here or not. So uh, if that's possible. Um, I want you to serve in the role of the agenda review for the meeting of the 28th. So that, is, that will uh, happen seven days before that virtually. And I will ask him to have you just attend to observe what an agenda review looks like over, uh, in person. By the way, board, it's been my, I haven't gotten to you yet, but I've had everyone sit through an agenda review to go through how I review the agenda as the president, kind of how I do things. And that way, when you fit this, uh, there's another thing that I put in, a lot of people don't believe in it, uh, but these seats change every year. I don't like mono presidencies where I sit there, he gets really comfortable with me right. and everybody else is ignored. You know how that can work out. So you'll, you'll take the end seat and then hopefully in your service as you stay on the board that someday you'll serve each one of these positions and there's something very significant about each one um so that's our calendar so we have a potential problem uh, of only three board members being here on march 28th um we have one meeting in in april and we'll talk about that at another meeting so that said, do I have uh, a motion to adjourn this meeting at 7.56? A motion to adjourn. I'll second. Call the question. Yes, who's I? Go ahead. I know you're jumping at that point. You're going to camera and I. Brianna texts on the I. That's good. Falls your app, I.